it's not here yet. Hey, Kurt, I have six o'clock. Okay, good evening and welcome everybody to this August 19th, 2020 Historic Resources Commission meeting. Uh, my name is Luke Mortensen and I'll be facilitating the Zoom video portion of tonight's meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and just go through our quick spiel um, and then we will get started. Uh, with me tonight is Lynn Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator and Staff Liaison to the Historic Resources Commission. We will work alongside the chair who, excuse me, who is on remote video to facilitate the meeting proceedings. Currently, I have everybody muted so we can talk through the general ground rules for tonight's meeting. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast live on the city's YouTube channel and public access channel um, channel 25. During the meeting, please mute yourself by clicking on the microphone icon found on the lower left-hand corner of the Zoom menu next to the video icon. When you are muted, a red line will appear over the icon. This will make it easier for everyone to hear the meeting. Just remember to unmute if and when you want to speak. In the menu, you can also turn your camera <clears throat> on or off by clicking the video icon located next to the microphone icon. For the purpose of this public meeting, please keep your video on for the duration. If you are participating by phone, you can enter star six to mute and unmute your phone. Somewhere on the Zoom screen, you will also see a choice to toggle between speaker and gallery view. Speaker view shows the active speaker. Gallery view tiles all of the meeting participants. Be aware that we will not be screen sharing as a part of the meeting this evening. All attachments, reference materials, and submissions from the public are included in, um, in an agenda packet. A few reminders to ensure that the provisions of the Kansas Open Meetings Act are met. Commissioners, you must state your name and title each time you speak. Members of city staff will also state their name and title each time they speak. I would also ask applicants and members of the public identify themselves each time before they speak to ensure that everyone is able to follow along. Individuals who signed up in advance to provide public comment remotely will be called upon by name. When you are called on, please unmute your listening device and state your name before speaking. Um, I, this, is, this is not directly related to tonight, but the chair will call for any in-person public comment for those who are physically present. Staff will direct that individual to the podium to speak um, while following social distancing and safety protocols. Um, any and all motions will need to be stated clearly. After a motion is made and seconded, the chair will call on each commissioner individually to provide their vote. Staff will then need to announce whether the motion carried in the count of the vote. I'd like to remind everybody one more time to please mute yourself when you're not speaking. And that is all on my end. Thank you. And I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you. This is Chair Jody Meyer. Um, so we'll officially call to order the special meeting of August 19th, 2020 of the uh, Historic Resources Commission. Um, first item on the agenda is communications. Do we have any communications from other commissions, state historic preservation officer or the, and or the general public? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. We have no new communications other than those that were included in your packet. This is Chair Meyer. Thank you, Lynn. Um, do we have any disclosure of ex parte communications? None. All right. Do we have any declaration of abstentions for specific agenda items by commissioners? All right, I hear none. <clears throat> Do we have any committee reports? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. We have no committee reports this evening. Thank you. This is Chair Meyer again. Uh, Do we have any public comment this evening? 
Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. There's no one signed up for public comment other than for specific <coughs> agenda items, and there is no one in the City Commission room for public comment. Thank you. This is Commissioner Meyer again. We will then move on to the public hearing items. Uh, number one is to consider a request from Christopher Rice asking the city to consider the placement of a monument recognizing the death of his brother, Harry Nicholas Nick Rice, who died in Lawrence on July 20th, 1970, during significant unrest in the Lawrence community in the KU campus. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. I'm not going to do a presentation on this. I think there was a lot of information in your packet, including the request from Mr. Rice, um, also some staff evaluation and a little bit of history about the events that took place that July um, that kind of tied back to the events in April of that same year. There are, um, like I said, there's some information in your packet, and I think the um, direction is for the commission to discuss the item and make a recommendation to the city commission. Is the applicant present? Okay, I'm sorry, this is Commissioner Meyer again. Uh, this is Chris Rice. I made the application. Welcome, thank you. Um, I, I'm very encouraged by all the information packet. It was very thorough, well done, and well written. Um, when we consider this, one thing that I did occur to me is that um, even though these two deaths between Tiger Dowdell and Nick Rice occurred only four days apart, they were under somewhat different circumstances. And it's be nice and economical to include them all into one uh, sort of framework. Certainly historical context is important, but it would be, you know, a little bit different in both circumstances. It might be shortchanging the different circumstances that are that existed there at the time. If I had to say one thing about Tiger, I would say he was two words. I would say freedom fighter. If I said one thing about Nick, I would say innocent bystander, <laughs> you know, and they uh, also the events occurred in different locations. Uh, so I'm not sure if it would be good to have a combined one that's duplicated at two different locations or uh, separate, you know, sort of uh, monuments. But anyway, I, I would request that the city of Lawrence put up something to honor Nick. Thank you. <laughs> um, is there any, this is uh, Commissioner Meyer again, is there any My apologies, I accidentally muted myself. Uh, Lynn, was there any public comment out on this item? Lynn Braddock, owner, Historic Resources Administrator. I if believe you have, you have um, uh, actually two people, one that wants to do public comment and then Steve Nowak is available to answer any questions that you have. So Carrie Altenbren is here for public comment. Okay, this is Commissioner Meyer again. Uh, Carrie, uh, what would you like to say this evening? Uh, this is Carrie Altenburn. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Chris said what he said because uh, this was supposed to be about a monument, a marker for, for Nick. Uh, it was never intended to include uh, Rick Dowdell, Tiger Dowdell, and I don't think it should. Uh, these are totally different circumstances. One was a racial incident. Uh, a gunning down of a young black man by a police officer. And the other one was, as he said, of uh, innocent bystanders of once again, the Lawrence police being involved. Uh, these were both police shootings in very un, uh, questionable circumstances that were not dealt with at the time properly at all. Uh, this is something that's hanging over Lawrence. Uh, it needs to be addressed much more than a single, well, we'll get it all on one monument and stick it somewhere. Uh, which it feels like to me, that's what that's what this is about right now. It's expanded into that. Uh, I think there's perfectly reasonable, and there should be a marker somewhere talking about the disruption, the, all of the violence that was going on in Lawrence at that time. 
separate from both, but I think there should be separate individual markers for Nick Rice up near KU, up near where he was shot, and a separate one for, for Tiger Dowdell near to where he was shot. And trying to rush this through, it seems like it's rushing it through. Has, have the Dowdells been contacted on this? I know there was talk about them having a monument or a marker somewhere near there in the past. And uh, if they aren't involved in this, it's like the city's sort of just saying, okay, this is what we're gonna do for you. Uh, it, 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 just doesn't, it just doesn't set well with me, uh, set well with me at all. Uh, this is not just about the history of Lawrence. It is about the history of Lawrence, but it's, more, it's my history too. I mean, I remember that. I was here. I remember the union burning. I was, in high, I was about ready to graduate from high school. I remember Nick and, and Tiger being killed. It's more than just the history of Lawrence, something you can put on a plaque and nobody under, no, somebody will look at. This is not just about what Lawrence is doing about something in the past. It's, it's dealing with the soul of Lawrence. Lawrence had, it was a very, both of those situations were very bad and they were conducted officially by city employees. And the city needs to do more than just put it on a, one marker and forget about it. Um, that's, that's, that's I, I, I can't see anything else but that. I would not, I would not be satisfied with, with just doing one marker and saying, we're done. Uh, and I don't think many people would, would understand. I don't think most people know you're even discussing this right now. It came up pretty quickly. Uh, as I said, the Dowdell family, as far as I know, have not been involved in this particular action at all. And uh, just doesn't set well. Thank you. This is Commissioner Meyer. Thank you, Carrie. Um, Mr. Nowak, did you wish to speak or say anything or only if we had questions? Um, I'm, I'm really here just to uh, answer any questions that you might have. The one thing I will point out is that um, regardless of what the decision is uh, in terms of the monument, uh, we at the Watkins Museum have partnered with other community groups to help facilitate the development, fabrication, and, and installation of these kinds of historical kiosks. So um, that, uh, that exists as a path to follow when a decision uh, is reached to, um, uh, to execute some sort of, uh, of a memorial. Thank you. Uh, this is Commissioner Meyer again. Um, I guess we'll bring it back to the commission for any discussion. This is uh, Commissioner Dave Evans. Um, you know, there is a precedent uh, in downtown Lawrence for Leo Berman's plaque. It's at uh, Merchant's Corner of 8th and Massachusetts. Uh, I think that uh, this is something that's really important to get done. I'm not sure I completely know all the details, but I'm in uh, definitely in favor of barking on a path to recognize these two individuals. This is Commissioner Irby. Um, I agree wholeheartedly, but I also agree that it needs to be more than one marker. We need at least two, and I would advocate for three markers. Um, obviously, the context of um, Tiger Dowdell's death would need to be part of Nick Rice's, but I, I agree that there needs to be multiple markers. This is Commissioner Buchanan. I completely agree with, with everything that's been said thus far. I am excited that this conversation is beginning, but in this specific example, I think there definitely needs to be two, and I agree that probably three markers that not only provide the context locations and references, but also how to dive deeper. I think that's the one thing that these plaques don't do is they are a quick snapshot and there needs to be a way for whatever this is to tell people where to go to dive deeper, to really understand what happened there to, to additional content. I think that 
in that same voice, I think it also increases the accessibility of that information because not everybody can get to these markers. So if it's the contents available online, you actually increase the accessibility um, and the educational piece of this um, is kind of twofold. So I just, you know, I want to thank, you know, the city and Steve and people to collaborate on making this happen. But in this instance, I would recommend two, if not three. And I would probably say at least three. Um, this is Commissioner Meyer. When you guys say three, what, where do you get three at? Um, I advocate for three uh, for many of the, for the same reasons that Mr. Altenburn uh, suggested three. I think there needs to be one to Nick Rice, one to Tiger Dowdell, and then one somewhere that's um, more centrally located. The other two should be near where those men died, but the third one should just be more centrally located that tells the story of the unrest in Lawrence um, in the 1970, in 1970 in particular. I think we have to tell that story. We do a really good job of Lawrence of telling the story of our more progressive history related to the free state cause, um, but we need to also tell this other story. This is Commissioner Buchanan. Um, I, if I understood this right, there's also talk about the uh, having the pool be recognized because it was segregated. I think that also fits within this context. So we've already jumped at least four monuments related to this context in this time. Um, so I think it's, I would absolutely recommend that we do move forward with creating these plaques, but I think uh, our second agenda item will speak more to the process and how this is going to happen because there's clearly multiple than just these two, three or four. This is Commissioner Fry. I certainly agree with uh, the concept and I, I really appreciate what Brenda said about uh, digging deeper, a, an avenue to dig deeper uh, when visiting these sites. Just, I, I think that's a great idea because you can't say you can't say enough uh, on a on a monument. Uh, this is Commissioner Meyer again, um, <clears throat> Lynn. I guess w what was the sense of urgency about getting this done so fast? Ben Braddock's owner, Historic Resources Administrator. Um, I think there, there, there was there, a request to have a marker installed. That request went to the city commission um, and they were concerned that the request had been there a couple of months waiting on action. And they wanted to make sure that there was no um, further delay in any type of decision whether or not to install a marker. So that is why they called um, had you call a special meeting for the Historic Resources Commission so that it didn't have to wait another month to your September meeting. Okay. Um, this is Commissioner Meyer again. Um, you know, the, I guess the specific action item that we're to consider tonight is recommending to the City Commission that a historic marker be placed on Oriad Avenue. Um, to recognize both deaths. Lynn, have the Dowdell, has the Dowdell family been involved in this? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources mm -hmm. Administrator. No, they have not. This is Commissioner yeah, Meyer again. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, Chris Rice here. Uh, just wanted to say that initially I've been in contact with the Dowdell family and they were involved in a plaque by the pool. That was a big thing. And then also a statue, a tiger statue by the pool. That was a kind of a, a, the avenue they were heading in. And so I thought, well, if they're doing that, then we ought to try and do something for Nick. And that's why my request, my initial request said, I'm sure the Tiger Dowdell, the Dowdell family would also appreciate a plaque. Uh, and just this afternoon, I think I got a, a text from a Spearman, uh, fellow named Spearman, and your last name and stuff. And so they're, they're still dealing with, um, Oh, the plaque that I think Watkins helped make up some of the verbiage on uh, about racial unrest and uh, or d division about the pool. So uh, I would be very wise to have them involved in this. And uh, I just didn't have a chance to get back to them. I've been very busy. Uh, and uh, along that lines, I will invite you all to my presentation tomorrow night at six o'clock in the uh, gazebo in South Park about what my search for the truth about Nick was. 
Thank you. This is Commissioner Irby. I would like some additional information, if possible, about the plaque by the pool. So is it specifically about uh, racial segregation and the pool, or is it, can, can someone explain more about what is underway there? Yes, I, <clears throat> I can tell you that while the contest is still in development, um, this is an effort that was led by uh, Boog Heiberger, and it, um, it deals with the uh, issue of um, racial injustice and the history of creating a desegregated municipal swimming pool in um, Lawrence, which opened, th th that's another one of these civil rights stories that are 50 years old now. Um, but it focuses on the history of the pool and, and what it took to, uh, to get there. This is uh, Commissioner Evans. I uh, am completely in support, as I've s stated, and I think other people agree, that we need to recognize at least three pieces, two gentlemen and, and one the, the Times itself. My problem is that this is so complicated, it's hard for me to say, yes, we should proceed A, B, or C. I'm, I'm, I mean, and, and I know we have two agenda items here, but eventually we probably need to pull one up and approve it or whatever. But I am incredibly in support of the concept of the city commission establishing a policy for uh, these kinds of things. And I think we should do whatever we can as the HRC to support that effort. Uh, but what we do at the moment is too complicated, at least in this meeting, to say yes, do A and not B. Uh, this is Commissioner Meyer again. I, I guess for me, it's not that difficult because the action item is to either recommend or not that a historic marker be placed there. So it's a recommendation. I don't know that we're mandating it. My only concern is um, I'm may, perhaps the Dowdell family would want that included too. I just, I have some reservations about making that a firm recommendation without knowing the feelings of their family. Um, but as long as it's a recommendation or maybe predicated on the idea that they would be consulted um, along with that, you know, I, I, I think that would be great. This is Commissioner Irby, and I agree. I'm in support of a recommendation to move forward, but I'm not in support of recommending the motion as it exists. <clears throat> I'm not in support of one marker, and I'm not in support of recommending a marker to commemorate Nick Rice without a marker to also commemorate and separately commemorate Tiger Dowdow. And again, I would like to recommend three markers. That would, that would be my preference as opposed to two, but at least two. So this is Commissioner Meyer, then do you have a, uh, a motion? This is Commissioner Foster. Could we do a little bit more discussion before we jump you to the motion? Um, I'm going to attempt to uh, hopefully sensitively be a, uh, do a little bit of devil's advocacy here because I'm looking forward to somebody getting me up to speed maybe a little bit. Um, so the is the desire to in a very simplified chad sort of way is the, is the desire to have a to you know acknowledge via a physical monument um an individual who was killed by the police that was an innocent bystander um and that's what i heard and then I just want to sort of stop and think about that in my experiences of you know traveling around and visiting monuments and experiencing cities and historical sites. That in an ideal world, that is what that was one additional thing that we would typically see in cities that we visited would be monuments and plaques for all individuals that were inappropriately killed by police officers? Because there, there may be more in Lawrence. Obviously, there's there's two, but there, there could be a, a dozen over the years. 
I, I'm not sure. Is that is that like a hugely naive question? Um, and I encourage anybody to to jump in and send me in the right direction. Sorry, could you repeat like the crux of the question? I guess we would be perhaps setting some level of a precedent here is what we are wanting to see in Lawrence and then I guess by indication other places too, frequent monuments for all people who have been inappropriately killed by police. Is that something that we want to see typically around Lawrence and be an example for other cities? I think well, this is Commissioner Buchanan and please anybody who's familiar with the history jump in. But it's my understanding of the context in that he was protesting the death of the gentleman in East Lawrence four days prior. So yes, he was an innocent bystander, but the purpose of him being there was to protest the inappropriate death of a black man. So the context that I think, Chad, you're talking about is secondary to the context of the turmoil of the time, which is why these are, in this instance, these are linked more directly than a um, incidental police shooting. So it's the point is the protest and the kind of climate in Lawrence, which is kind of so counterproductive to our early founding culture and stories. It, it's really in juxtaposed of that. And I think that's the context that we're trying to get at is that even these places that are founded on, on freedom and equality still have struggles. Thank you. This is Commissioner Foster again. Um, that, that helps. Um, and, and so, yeah, obviously we're looking at this in the context of what's been going on um, since the murder of George Floyd. Uh, and, and I'm imagining going and visiting Seattle again or Portland or Chicago or, or, or Minneapolis where I haven't kept close track, but I'm guessing that folks have been killed amidst the protest in those cities. When, you know, would we want to be, would, would I expect when I go visit those cities in the future again, to see a monument or an acknowledgement at each location for any, any further act of murder or inappropriate death? Or would I expect to see some sort of collective monument that acknowledged what went on in 2020 and why it went on and, you know, the various people it may have impacted, um, you know, the, the number of deaths that may have occurred during the protest or the number of arrests or you know, all the stuff that we're reading in the news that um, I, I, I don't know, I guess I, I'm maybe more in favor of one collective acknowledgement that, that educates about this whole time in Lawrence's history um, and, and, and it does tell it as that one big story and ties all the dots together as opposed to a some very unfortunate person was killed at this particular spot um, but and then I don't know there may be others around too if that makes any sense. Hi, this is Commissioner Holder. Um, I appreciate everyone's comments and appreciate the opportunity to talk about this tonight. Um, I do need to say that I was very unfamiliar with these events that happened in 1970. Um, it was eye-opening to know that this was coming up as an agenda item, and I took the opportunity to educate myself as best as I could. Um, and I hope that everyone else takes that opportunity if they haven't already. Um, from reviewing the executive summary and hearing everyone's comments, I do agree that it would be um, a challenge to really appropriately address everything that was going on in just one marker. Um, however, I'm having a difficulty quantifying that three markers will do it. Um, I would caution us uh, that if we are also on our secondary action item approving this new policy, um, or not approving, but recommending that the HRC takes on this review. We don't, um, if we jump in, set a precedence of three markers for this particular request, and then the next request, three markers, um, we do need to think strategically about the information that we're putting 
throughout Lawrence. I mean, we will be keepers. Um, this is not a isolated request. We will have additional markers and we need to keep that in our mind. Um, I do think it would be a little beneficial. We are all visual people. We review plans, we review documents, we review a lot of background. Um, I think it would be helpful to get a little bit more information about what would actually be content wise on a marker um, before we provide a recommendation. I think that's what a lot of us reading between the lines, that's what a lot of us are struggling with um, because the initial request was more of a memorial in, in all of the paperwork and what's being recommended or proposed for recommendation is actually a historic marker, which is a different thing. Um, and the historic marker is very uh, content heavy. And so what I visualize is something that tells all of the events that transpi transpired over April to August talking about the curfew, um, very similar to the Watkins Museum um, exhibit. So I think it would be helpful to defer this item until we get more content of what would be on a proposed marker and then we reviewed that. Thank you. All right, this is Commissioner Meyer. Is there any further committee discussion? <laughs> I, I do want to make, this is Commissioner Buchanan, I think on that same note, I agree with everything that's been said thus far, and it is a complicated thing. Um, but to the point of waiting to make sure a family member is wanting to go forward with something, I think is not a, it's polite, but when you're talking about history, history is kind of facts, and we're not always going to have descendants of a family or representatives of a family to consider in all of these situations. Um, so just to, when we make our motion, I, I, I do think a recommendation to move forward with um, exploring this is definitely, I would be in favor of quantifying something I'm not comfortable doing because I think there's additional context and additional things that tie around this idea. And I think this this one thing is, it is so much more. And if we are looking at doing a policy and creating a systemic kind of cohesive city attempt at being able to tell our story, we just need more time. This is Commissioner Evans. I'll go back to what I said earlier. I think that's the second agenda item. I mean, it, as I read this, that is what they are interested in, is a group that gets together and talks about this and eventually, I think, comes back or the HRC, someone is involved in that. So it's more complicated than just being able to say yes or no right now on, you know, whether it's one or two or whatever. This is Commissioner Meyer. I mean, are you saying you want to defer a, a recommendation until the policy is developed? Yes. I, I mean, I think that's the, right. Well, this is Commissioner Meyer again. I, I'm gonna put out there that I think we should recommend the plaque and take up the policy later. And I know that seems sort of antithetical to uh, trying to be cohesive, but I think this family has waited a long time and deserves some, um, I'm sorry, uh, deserves a decision about that. I'm concerned that the policy analysis will take uh, quite a while to put together. So my, my position would be we should vote to approve the, approve it in some fashion, three, three two, whatever, um, and take up the policy uh, issue second. Can we, so, can we uh, make a recommendation and also like include language that um, the markers be further reviewed by some subcommittee? I know that's in the second agenda item, but some subcommittee of this group or this entire group again, in, if, if the subcommittee is not ready to go yet. Is 
Yes, Commissioner Meyer. Lynn, can you explain what the process was going to be if we approved this this evening? Lynn I mean, Braddock's Lynn Braddock's Braddock. owner, Historic Resources Administrator. I think the City Commission was looking for a recommendation from the HRC as to whether to put or install a marker um, for Mr. Rice. I think you have latitude with what you want that recommendation to be, whether or not you would recommend that it be one of a set or of three, whether or not you think it should be a memorial marker or a tablet marker that explains context. I think they are wanting to get your opinion on this specific item before you, because it's already in progress, before you take up consideration for the marker program in general. So staff would ask that you make a recommendation to the city commission um, for this particular item that's already in process and then have the discussion about the program as a whole and make a recommendation on a program. Lynn, this is Commissioner Irby. Can our recommendation on this marker include that the marker be bought back once once some text has been drafted or um, before it's before it is finally and forever approved? Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Yes, you can make that as part of your recommendation. Uh, this is Commissioner Meyer. Lynn, I mean, generally, uh, if we were to approve it without that tonight, I mean, what was the idea of who was going to come up with the content of the, the plaque or marker? Lynn Braddock's owner, Historic Resources Administrator. Um, Mr. Rice included some text in his letter to the City Commission that he would like for consideration. I think if you think think there needs to be more text to um, kind of explain what happened and why there's a memorial there, then that would be part of your recommendation. And you could um, appoint or recommend appointing a staff person or a group of people to look at that text. It, really what you're doing is making a recommendation to the city commission. Well, I, I guess I was curious as to if if we had just if the recommendation uh, or the request was just to make a recommendation about whether it should or shouldn't be installed. Uh, that's one thing. And then the city decides who's going to review the content uh, with Mr. Rice or whomever. Uh, I think if we have to sit here or people want to parse out what that's going to say specifically, that's not something that's going to happen tonight. That's my two cents. <clears throat> so I, I would still this, this is Commissioner. Yeah, this is Commissioner Foster. Yeah, yeah, definitely concerned about the concept of, of design by committee that um, it might do a disservice to everyone if um, if there wasn't a thoughtful, <laughs> deliberate, um, comprehensive um, sort of design process that, that address all of the issues of that of that period and not just one. This is Commissioner Buchanan. I've got a question about making a recommendation that alludes to a process that's going to be different than the process that we're recommending that they undertake. You know, it's hard for me to separate the two agenda items. Um, I know it's, it's easy to say, yes, we recommend having these events and people get commemorated using a plaque as far as anything beyond that, you know, is there, can we be in legal trouble for saying, hey, go through this other process, which is different than the process that we're recommending you to undertake to achieve this? This is Commissioner Meyer. I mean, right now there's not a policy. So we have a request to approve or not. And that's different from if we end up ultimately end up adopting a policy and then we have something to analyze it with. So, I mean, I think it happens all the time with 
various guidelines and so forth that the city come up, comes up with. And I understand what you're saying is in terms of, you know, is the cart before the horse. But I mean, right now we have a specific request and no policy. I think we should make a decision based on that and then come up with a policy. And, you know, if the policy is different um, than how we decided it tonight, uh, you know, then, then it is, but that's because we didn't have a policy yet. So this is Commissioner Buchanan again. Can we say we recommend going through with this and that this be the first kind of trial to get through our proposed process? Well, I don't think we, this is Commissioner Meyer. I mean, I don't think we have a proposed process. I mean, what the process is, is the city sent it to us to recommend doing. Now, uh, and so we don't have a, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think we have any sort of standard for how we've done this now. We're just deciding it based on the information that we have. That's different from us going through and creating a policy and guidance for people in the future. So this is Commissioner McCann. So what if our agenda items are flipped? Well, I don't, uh, I mean, all right. I guess, are you talking about coming up with an entire policy tonight or are you just talking about- Is that a second agenda item? Like to recommend that process? Right, I mean, so the, the action item is recommend the city commission establish a policy that refers these requests to the Historic Resource Commission and then we create a standing subcommittee, blah, blah, blah about that. Mm -hmm. This is Commissioner Holder. That, that action, the second action item that you're asking even if it was before this, it would still go back to the city commission and it wouldn't be established as a policy. True. So right. it wouldn't right. matter. Yeah, this is Commissioner Irby and I was gonna say much the same thing and also just that I think we should uh, make a recommendation on this now rather than delay for a policy. I think we should also make a recommendation about a policy, but um, I, would, I would be in favor of recommending that um, we, uh, recommend two or more historic markers uh, to the city commission to memorialize these deaths. This is Commissioner Holder. I would also be in favor of making a recommendation for two or more um, to memorialize the deaths and then include that language that's in the um, current action item that they be of sufficient size to include historic context. Yes, Commissioner Irby, I agree with that. Okay, this is Commissioner Meyer. Uh, Commissioner Irby, was that a, a motion to recommend to the City Commission that uh, two or more historic markers be placed? Uh, this is Commissioner Irby. It was sort of my attempt to feel out whether I should make a motion. But oh, okay. It sounds like I should. So I make a motion that the HRC recommend to the City Commission that uh, two or more historic markers uh, should be created to memorialize the killing of uh, Rick Tiger Dowdell and Harry Nicholas Nick Rice and should provide the context surrounding their deaths. This okay, is this Commissioner, is Commissioner Meyer, is there a second? Uh, this is Commissioner Foster. Uh, can I ask for a little bit of clarification there? Could that include mandating working with families when available? as opposed to doing it, not engaging with the families? It could, I, oh, sorry, this is Commissioner Arby. I suppose it could, that would not be part of my personal recommendation. Okay, this is Commissioner Meyer. Is there a, a second to Commissioner Irby's motion? This is Commissioner Holder, I second. Sorry. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'll go ahead and take Roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Irby. Commissioner Irby, aye. Uh, Commissioner Holder. Commissioner Holder, aye. Commissioner Meyer is an aye. Commissioner Fry. Commissioner Fry is an aye. Commissioner Buchanan Young. Commissioner Buchanan, aye. Commissioner Foster. Commissioner Foster, aye. And Commissioner Evans. It looks like we have lost Commissioner Evans. This is Luke Mortensen, planning staff. I don't see him, see him, in, him in, the in the waiting room, room either. Oh. Well. <clears throat> Shh. 
Should we wait a minute and see if he pops back up? Lynn Braddock Commissioner. Oh. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator, you can um, move forward with your call of the motion. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, then uh, we had a, uh, a motion and a second, and that motion carries uh, six to zero, or uh, six with one abstaining, I guess. So uh, we will then move on to um, item number two, which is the consideration of recommending a policy for the review of historic markers to the city commission. Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. Similar to your last agenda item, I'm not going to give you a staff review or staff report. This is really um, in light of your last agenda item with the City Commission wanting to get some feedback from you on historic markers and how the city should go about reviewing those. They haven't asked you to do a policy. Um, what staff is requesting is that you make a recommendation to the city commission about how markers um, would be appropriately processed through the city when the city receives a request. Um, sorry, it's Commissioner Meyer. Was there any public comment on this item, Lynn? There's no one, uh, Lynn Braddock Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator, there's no one signed up for this item except for Carrie Altenbrand. And I believe Steve is also here to answer any questions you may have. Lynn Braddock, Zollner, Historic Resources Administrator. You also had an email communication from KT Walsh in your packet. Thank you. Uh, this is Commissioner Meyer. Uh, Carrie, uh, do you have anything else to say about that or were you just really directly related to Mr. Rice? Uh, Carrie Altenberg, yeah, I, I, have, a, I have a comment on, on the, uh, the proposal that was in the staff recommendation. Uh, I think a subcommittee is a good idea, but I, I think it should be expanded. I think there should be uh, spaces on that subcommittee for uh, citizens uh, who are not associated with any of the uh, with any of the with any of the, uh, the groups that are already on there. Uh, specifically, in the case that we're talking about having family, you know, that would be a place where you'd have a family member on that committee. Obviously, they wouldn't be part of any of those uh, boards or commissions uh, that are, are, are talked about as in the recommendation. So that would be what I think uh, I think should be done is is open up the membership to that that, that committee that that subcommittee uh, a little broader than uh, than it is included in the uh, in the staff recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I don't know if Mr. Nowak had something else to say. Yes, uh, Steve Novak, the director of the Watkins Museum. Uh, I just want to add that um, the Watkins Museum is uh, willing to participate in, in some form in the process that the commission recommends. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Meyer here will bring it back to the commission for discussion. This is Luke Mortensen, planning stuff. I'm just going to jump in really quickly. We've resent Commissioner Evans the link to tonight's meeting, and uh, if he's able to get on again, we'll add him back as quick as possible. Okay. This is Commissioner Buchanan. I've got a couple questions because um, I'm not too sure. It's clear um, in the recommendation, staff's recommendations about how this would function. It sounds very similar to the ARC, uh, just a different type of review. My question is, is what are those tasked with reviewing like, in whoever the reviewers are gonna use as the document or the guiding kind of, I don't wanna say design guidelines, but a set of guides 
to help make those recommendations both to the HRC and to the city commission. You know, do we need to have a better actual identified definition of a memorial versus a plaque versus a kiosk versus a historic marker? Um, so I'm not saying come up with design guidelines, but something that does clarify and delineate the different kinds of physical markers that can be placed. Um, my second question is, is, is in addition to those that are on the recommended subcommittee, have has there been discussion about how the city is going to market and make this information available? So I would think somebody like Freedom's Frontier and Steve help me, um, and maybe our, the connection to Freedom's Frontier would be through Watkins, but they seem to have a lot of um, tell your story ability already that can kind of fast track some of this. Um, so I don't know if unmistakably Lawrence or other organizations like that, not too much be in the, the main committee, but at least help drive the guidelines and the formation of those. You know, what is it that we are marking? How we're gonna mark them and how we're gonna use those markers to educate and disseminate the history, our history. Um, this is Commissioner Irby. Uh, I'm in favor of the motion. Uh, I guess I'll say that first of all. Um, couple of comments, I guess, or questions. One is that could it be uh, one of the first um, agenda items of the subcommittee to come up with guidelines such that um, Commissioner Buchanan is suggesting are needed? Um, another comment is I'm not necessarily in favor of including family members or broadening the committee. I think too many um, positions on the subcommittee could be detrimental. Um, similarly to the HRC, you know, property owners can bring forward requests, but they're not necessarily involved in evaluating them. Um, and I think that something should be similar um, in this instance. Um, I'm also not entirely, I'm not opposed to Freedom Frontier being involved, um, but I, I think that they have a, a, a separate and different agenda, and I don't know that they need to be involved in this particular subcommittee. I think the relationship through the Watkins would be sufficient. This is Commissioner Holder. Um, I also am in favor of making the recommendation to city commission. I did have a question. Um, I'm a, I made the assumption by reading the packet that we are recommending that the city commission establishes a policy, but that the city would actually establish that policy and provide guidelines for review. Would that be a correct assumption? Lynn Braddock is the Historic Resources Administrator. It would be the city commission established that established a policy. The policy. And then as part of that, um, depending on what they establish, would set up who or how guidelines would be established for that policy. Thank you. This is Commissioner Meyer, any further? Discussion? Or does anyone have a motion? This is Commissioner Holder. I move to recommend the city commission establish a policy that refers historic marker requests to the Historic Resources Commission. The Historic Resources Commission will create a standing subcommittee to review historic marker requests and make a recommendation to the 
Historic Resources Commission. The subcommittee will include a representative from the Human Relations Committee, Parks and Recreation Department, and the Watkins Community Museum, as well as the historian position of the Historic Resources Commission. The Historic Resources Commission will make a recommendation to the City Commission, who will be the final authority to approve a historic marker. Thank you. This is Commissioner Meyer. Is there a second? Commissioner Irby, second. Okay. We'll take roll call vote now. Commissioner Irby? Aye. Commissioner Holder? Aye. Commissioner Meyer is an aye. Commissioner Fry? Yes. Commissioner Buchanan? Aye. Commissioner Foster? Aye. And did we ever get Commissioner Evans back? Luke Mortensen, Planning Development Services. No, we have not. Okay. All right then. Uh, motion carries six to zero, or six six and one one abstaining. Not here. Okay. Great. Then I think we are ready to um, adjourn for the evening. If there isn't any miscellaneous items. Does anyone have any miscellaneous items? No, then I will move that we adjourn. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone. Right. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Do they not vote to adjourn?